Who's your barber talk? Who's your barber talk family? And we're live. Bro. <laughs> Here together. I, I, I would rather hear Who's Ray One Vintage do. Who's your barber talk? Let's go, baby. We're back. Episode four. We we're have back. Special guest. Special dude. <laughs> nah. <laughs> The one and only. This is the guy right here. No, no. I, you know, I, say it again. Say it again. This is the guy right <laughs> <here>. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm talking shit. But realistically, uh, man, we're, we're grateful to have you on here. Ta- Taven me. Jackson, for anybody that, you know what I mean, maybe not living on earth or anything like that. So, uh, people have been listening to FM radio. <laughs> right, right, right. So, uh, Center Grove. Mm hmm. The crib. I, that, you know what I mean? Run, run me through what it was like growing up here in Indiana, um, not too far away from Bloomington. Uh, just uh, that inner city vibe. Talk mm-hmm. to me. Well, you know, just growing up in Indiana, you know, there's not really a lot of things to do other than, you know, basketball. You know, that's what I was raised. <laughs> that's what I was raised to do, you know, my whole life. You know, obviously my brother did that, but. And, you know, my junior year, I started getting, you know, offers for football. And I was like, yo, Pops, like, this football shit might, might be it. Yeah. And so I gave up. You know, I, I possibly could have came here for basketball. You know, they were looking at me, but I, you know, I told them, I was like, you know, I think I'm going to play football. You know, six, four guards come. Yeah, they're always there. So, but, you know, that's this is how it went. And, you know, the rest is history. What was it that made you choose football over basketball? Yeah, I think there's, you know, there's there, there's not a lot of, you know, 6'4 quarterbacks. So, and there's a lot of 6'4 guards. That's what my dad like always that. told me. You know, I was okay in basketball, but I always had, you know, I always had a pretty good arm. I always can use my feet, you know, when I needed to scramble a little bit. I played baseball, so, like, a bunch of arm, different arm angles, you know, worked out on the football field, and I got offers. So, you know, anywhere I can go to school for free, that's what I took a chance on it. Well, yeah. and you you were you were obviously you know what I'm saying re- relatively good. You guys didn't do too bad your junior and your senior year. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> like like you you obviously had some type of IQ. Um, there was something that definitely set you set you apart or set your mentality of just knowing that you you belonged on a football field. Yeah, I, I, you know I think that's just you know making plays like going out there and just playing free like backyard, just playing backyard you know football. You know, yeah. just, I think that's how Mahomes is in the NFL. That's yeah. just how he plays. I, I see a little Mahomes in so you. Good. I don't know. I can't <laughs> Shit, lie, bro. No. I can't lie, bro. Hey, he's kind of he's kind of tough. He's I'm tough. Dude. <laughs> yeah. And and realistically, like, you've made some tough plays. I've watched you slang the ball down the field. You know what I'm saying? I've I've, I've watched some some pretty pretty immaculate catches this year. Well, immaculate. I, big word. I want to ask you a question. What is <laughs> You talk about play style, and you could you could relate it to a guy in the NFL or maybe a, a former NFL guy who's someone, you know, that you kind of look up to and try and almost model their game after yours. Yeah, definitely. You know, Mahomes is in the picture. I watch his highlights all the time. You know, I watch a lot of Brady highlights too, just, you know, the way he processes the game and, you know, when he can take a check down or when he cannot and how – how he's just pushing the ball down the field, and, and you know everybody loves a Rod too. You mean like a Peyton Manning? You said Tom Brady earlier, but I respect uh, the Tom, Tom Brady take. Tom he, doesn't, Brady? he doesn't need to bring up. All right, Tom no, Brady. How do you feel about go. Indiana people from Indiana being Tom Brady fans? Is that is that cool? I love Peyton Manning. You know, I went to Tennessee. I talked to him all the time. But that's the goat. I just I don't think so. I think Tom Brady. I think Tom Brady's the goat. I like that. I agree, so, dude. You, hey, listen, you not agree? Listen, I train. disagree. I think Peyton Manning's You're, the greatest quarterback of all time. He's been telling me all day. It's like, Lebr- it's like LeBron, bro. Since when have, has Peyton... Uh, that's it's right. not like when, LeBron. When, that's when like, did, that's did, like saying wait, wait, that's like wait. saying Kobe's you, better you than LeBron. You asked me why. That, when, when, is, when has Tom Brady ever took a bad team to anything? Bro, he's got seven Never. Super Bowls. What Never. Do you mean? A bad Never. team? What do you mean? Peyton Manning took a damn near sad team to a Super Bowl and won. And almost won two. Tom Brady never did that. Tom Who? Brady arguably had one of the, I mean, easily one of the greatest coaches of all time. That is his true. entire, basically his entire successful career, except for one year at the Buccaneers when they packed that team with basically all stars. 
made a super team almost because, oh, we got Tom Brady. We're about to, you know what I mean? Like, people taking pay cuts to win. Peyton Manning just played with dudes and won. Dude, and he, he had Reggie game. Wayne, yeah. Marvin Harrison. Yeah. I don't know if you know who Marvin he Harrison targets, Jr. He is. He had targets, bro. But he had, he had targets. He had Brandon Stoke. Like, bro... Who's, I hear who's what who's you're saying. Edwin James. It's not the like, same. Joseph Adai. Like, chill. Right, Tom Brady had a Joseph great Adai? defense. Joseph Adai was. He was rookie of the year. He wasn't all that, bro. And I'm we not saying he was. Team. We were never a running team. 100%. Yeah, but, yeah, but the defense was crazy that yeah, Tom Brady had every year. Yeah. Even on the Bucks. Yeah. Like that defense. Well, like, like I said, people were taking pay cuts to play with Tom Brady. Same thing with, like, people on, like, all star teams in the NBA. Like, people literally, like, Go like they make a star lineup, and then they say, Do they you want to the play with thing these guys? And then they take pay cuts, and they, they make did, a stacked team. They did the same thing for Peyton, right? When he went to the Broncos, he had a pretty oh, stacked, he bro, he had a pretty team. stacked he had a stack, team. He had a stacked team, but also he he knew no one they didn't knew win though, right? No one yeah, knew they what won Peyton, that year. They did, yes. they, yeah, they I won mean, the Super Bowl that year. Does he have two, two, two. How many yeah. does Tom Brady have? <laughs> Seven, but that that's what matter. I thought. That's, yeah, that's what I true. thought. Next question. That's what I thought. Um, all right, let's bring it back to Center Grove. Obviously, you guys found a lot of success. Uh, what separated Center Grove and maybe you know just the locker room vibes? You know the culture of Center Grove. What separated Center Grove from every other high school? I think it was our head coach. You know, Coach Moore. He was just an old school guy. Obviously, you can tell, like, I mean, I threw the ball 12 times a game. So, I mean, it was all about, we ran the wing tee. You know, that was all right. I mean, I was okay with it because, you know, you know our college coaches saw that, I, you know, I could throw the ball a little bit. They didn't really need a lot of film. But old school guy, man, our workouts were brutal because he was a track coach. Mm -hmm. So we would wake up in the morning and say it's like workouts before uh, – football football season even started so the summer we would wake up about 6 a.m we would walk out there 7 a.m and we would we would do track workouts you know a lot of football teams do football workouts we would do track workouts so he'd be like all right go stand on the 300 line so the 300 <laughs> line is like the track if anyone's familiar yeah, yeah. with yeah. it mm. five of those whole team five done right then we would sprint 10 uh, 100s on the turf. Boom. And then we would go two 500s, 500 meters. If, if People would be familiar with this if they yeah. were on track. And it was just brutal. But every time we got into season, we were so conditioned. Like, we just never let it. We just never let it. Yeah. And so that's why I feel like that's why we – and we had dominant talent. Like, our D-line was – Crazy. Yeah. And if you're a better athlete, at a, or if you have better athletes, I mean, UND did a similar type of like regimen. Yeah. The, at the UND soccer actually I had a friend who worked at, or who uh, who was on the team, and what he said is that basically their athletic ability was so much better than everyone else's they could get away with like formations and strategies that other teams could never get away with, and that would like stretch them. And at a certain point, like if you have let's say another team has really good talent, but they don't have the athleticism or the the endurance, you know, you can just make a plan to stretch them out and, you know, beat them, you know, even at a lower skill level, which you guys obviously didn't have, yeah. you can just gas them out. You know? Yeah. Well, we play in the mix. Here's the funny thing. We play in the mix. So we were always, we were never the most athletic team on the field. Yeah. Everything that was Warren or every team, yeah. every team you think Pike, Pike? Pike? like the, the, the <laughs> athleticism that of the Mick teams were crazy, but I, I think everybody on that team, my junior, senior year, will uh, even anybody that's played at Center Grove will tell you we're never the most athletic on the field. They're just tough. So we're, we're just tough. Just, yeah. I, know, just I used to play. Bastards, uh, man. I used to play football at Martinsville, and we would play you guys mm. in sectional every year. And uh, <laughs> no, hold on. No, we didn't play you guys. And I didn't. We didn't. No, play no, not much. you guys. No, not, I'm like, uh, let me see the, the highlights time, was right tough. now, bro. Tough. You can see this, y'all. I'll show you some of my videos. But what, what, what position did you <laughs> play, bro? Too? No, so uh, like back, right? yeah, that but was, that was cold. I remember uh. we would play. We played. Uh, it was whenever they before a six A was even a thing. So way back in the day, they had five A, and that was the highest you could go. And we were in the same same division. So during sectionals one year. We play you guys. You guys knock us out, and we're in the locker room. And I, like I didn't play defense; I just played running back. So I'm like 
pissed off at everybody that wouldn't just go tackle this fucking running back that just kept oh, running down who their throat. Was the running back? I don't remember. There was like three. What year was it? What year? Uh, 2013. There was like Man, damn. Shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> there was oh, like no, I don't, there was like gonna, two or three get... running backs. Oh yeah, they're. But I was a hard runner, so I'm in there talking to some of the the de- like defense guys we had. And I'm like, bro, what the f- like, what's up? Like, I know you're tougher than that. Like, what was going on? And he was like, bro, you know how hard you run? They had they had three of you out there, bro, just <laughs> going as hard as they could. I was like, dog. It's a bunch of white boys yeah. that just don't stop. They don't just, stop. <laughs> All right. No center of gravity type shit. So so take me a little bit back to the recruiting process. You end up. You know, going to Tennessee for that one year. What was that like, and and why did you decide to go to Tennessee? So I decided to go to Tennessee. So Tennessee was unranked, and I think one year under Coach Heupel, and everyone was dogging them. But I saw in Coach Heupel and and his staff a quarterback friendly system, because I mean, they're almost air raid, like they 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 play so fast, and. What I saw, I was like, damn, this is this is who I want. This is the offense I want to play for. And I was like, and it's Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, yeah. So I was I was like, told my dad, I'm like, I'm there. Like I want to play there. And obviously it didn't work out and I, I came I came back home, but man, Tennessee was crazy. They're what, nuts, bro. What <laughs> the fans in the stadium. Yeah, like what what separates a, a school like Tennessee or like just what about it makes it so special and so, you know, Tennessee, it's just such just, a big name. Yeah, it's. I think it's the fan base and, like, the name, yeah. like, Tennessee. Like, it's just an SEC school. The Vols, baby. The, people the people Vols. freak out for that shit. SEC, the fan base, and just the history behind, like, you know, obviously Peyton Manning went there. and Their football was unbelievable. And the fans go crazy for that stuff down in the south. So it was like a no-brainer. What What do you think is, you just bring up Peyton Manning, what's the best piece of advice Peyton Manning has ever given you? So it was oh, crazy. I was I was shocked. So here's the story. So we're playing Kentucky. And I think that's, I broke my collarbone before that. So I'm, I'm on the field just with my, my jersey on and everything. And Peyton Manning and Morgan Wallen come – they're, they're standing right behind me. I had no idea. And they tap on my shoulder. And Peyton's like, hey, Tave. And I go, and I look over. I'm like, oh. And then I look over to the right. It's Morgan Wall. He's like, what's up, kid? How you doing? And I'm like, holy. I'm like, hey, sir, how you doing? And Peyton's just like, hey, what happened to your shoulder? No, actually, he knew what happened. Because he watches every game. Yeah. He watches all the games. And I was like, yeah, I broke my collarbone. He was like. It's all right. That's all right. I've been hurt a couple times. He was like, man, when you were in there, man, you look good. Like, you look athletic. You look like almost like a Josh Dobbs kind of, you know, kind of kind yeah. of guy, like an athletic guy that can go out there and rip it and use his feet. Use his feet. And I was like, thank you, sir, man. I'm, that means a lot. And he was like, whatever you do, just, you know, just keep going. You know, just always keep going. No matter the up and downs, you're going to be a quarterback. There's going to be a lot of ups and downs. You're the guy that sets the, sets the tone. You got to be a leader. And I just took those words and I was like, no matter what happens, you know, there's going to be a lot of up and downs and ups and downs in this game. You know, you always just got to stay right here. I mean, how does that, how, too low. how does that even make you feel like c- advice coming from someone so legendary? So, you know, with so much success at, at the, at the quarterback level, right? Like what, how does that make you feel when he says something like that? It's just, it's almost like a blessing. You know, I'm just like a look, like I was just like a little kid in that moment. I was like, holy it's Peyton Manning and yeah. it's Morgan Wallen and he didn't Morgan yeah, Wallen like, he was just standing there but I was just, just like out. I was kind of eyeing him I was like dude this is like hey he's great, over there soaking the, them gems the, the, in too oh dude he was he, he didn't even know he didn't even know what was going on like yeah. he, he was probably so yeah. he was probably so drunk and having a great time but it was just crazy man you, you're just like a little kid in those moments you just you know so you just soak it up like, well, a, you like can, a sponge you soak up you can advice. see the way that you've been able to kind of carry it and transfer over here um you know I, I i got to meet you whenever you first got over here and got to talking to you a little bit and i believe that it was like uh you got a tree right god damn face. it what? the tree in the f- i knew it was gonna be the plant bro totally in the way. i had to fix the tree hey it's good though we're, i'm sorry we're good bro i, I didn't mean to break it up but that needed to happen 
So we had to get Where it done early. Uh, stressing about the tree bro, the whole time. I bro, saw I'm looking him. over the damn he's just, he's just, face. I can barely hear you. It just sounds like the tree, you know? I can hear him great. You don't it's even like, have the headphones on. It's like we're talking to the tree. I can hear him great. Everything's okay. Resume. Oh, he's going <laughs> back. Fine. And Rewind. we're back. Sorry, guys. Hey. We're, we're starting I'm sorry. Like that. that needed to happen, though. It's for no, the no, no, no. Like it, for the clips. Bro, bro. It's okay. The tree, baby. It's okay. So your shirt, let me let me ask you. This episode's called what, The Tree. What, <laughs> what are the... Interviewing a tree. <laughs> David Jackson behind a tree the entire <laughs> interview. <laughs> behind I'm the, the tree. bad guy, right? <laughs> so your shirt, though. What can you tell it? me who is on it? Uh, it's it's a uh, it's Alenia uh, Karvenshoff, and she was an ice skater. Tough. That's definitely tough her name. Shirt. Look her up. I, I, that's why I asked because they're going to we look it up. <laughs> am, so I, so I, am I going to be interrupting? With it. Am I going to be interrupting, or can we move on? And and can I? You actually would be interrupting. Um, okay. So yeah. she was a figure skater, and uh, <laughs> her favorite color was purple. And All yeah. right. So and who's your A one vintage on Instagram? If <laughs> <laughs> you want to go ahead, Jack. Don't do worry about it. Faded shop. Uh, go ahead, Jack. I, I, I go think. Ahead. Sorry, my bad. Go ahead. You're a couple. Go ahead, Jack. Sorry. <laughs> you're a couple. <laughs> you're a couple of years removed from the process, obviously. But you know, looking back at the entire recruiting process, is there any advice you would give to somebody that's maybe a sophomore, junior, senior right now that's you know trying to just play collegiate football at any position? Is there? there any advice you would give to someone like that right now anything you learned anything i learned i mean i learned a lot of things it's almost you learn like just just kind of take it you know day by day don't yeah. rush it you know, a lot of kids these days are like i got to get offer i got to post about it and my dad was not with that um oh Man, he didn't want me posting any like of the offers that I got, yeah. but as a young kid, like I wanted to. But like now nowadays, like I mean, these kids, these kids are like posting like fake offers and stuff. It's like crazy. I mean, that's some breaking news on <laughs> Hoosier <laughs> Barber didn't talk. Know that. This promo. No, yeah, dude, there's some guys out there that post fake offers, and then like next week they'll get an offer. Dang. Because that's how recruiting is. Like, yeah. Damn, bro. If you get, bro, a, if you get an offer, yeah. like if you get an offer to a big time school, the co the coaches from other schools are going to see gonna them. They're going to be it, like, yeah. "All right, this team offered this kid. I'm going to offer." Yeah. Why not? You know, at that point, you're just competing yeah. for the same person. Yeah. If, if the yeah, I mean, hey, it is what it is. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. But you know, imagine imagine I get I post a fake offer. I get offered by Alabama to be a cornerback. Yeah. Well, and then I get recruited by yeah. IU. Some coaches some coaches will know, but. Yeah. And then like you go in. If, yeah. you get, if you get, if you get, you know. know, if you get recruited in that point, and you go and you're sad. Yeah. Bye bye. Yeah, no more scholar. Easy. You know nothing. You have nothing after that. So. Yeah, but the question that you asked, like, I just take it like day by day. Don't 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 rush things. A lot of people just you know they just want to rush and get it over with. Like if I could, I, I would love to go back to high school. I would love to go back to high school and just not have any offers and just play ball. Like, because it, it was so fun. And these kids just, they want to rush to get to college. And college is, man, college is fun, but at the same time, it's not fun. Yeah, it's a job <laughs> like, at this it point. It is. Yeah. Like, you have no time. I mean, we can get into that later. But just as a young kid, just, you know, go out, go out there and have fun. You know, go make relationships with your teammates because you're going to have that those relationships with your high school teammates for a long time. I mean, I still do. And just go out there and just ball. You know what I'm saying? Try to break all the school records. Yeah. What's your What's your favorite memory from high school? High school football, more specific. I think my favorite memory is when we played Cathedral, and man, I was I was stinking it up, <laughs> and I was turning the ball. I was turning the ball over in the first half, and it was like the biggest game of yeah. probably like one of the biggest games in Indiana like history. Yeah, Cathedral is like a. That's when they were. That's when. That's when they were raw. Yeah, and so they came to our place, and they were talking like, "Oh, we're gonna beat you! Mm -hmm. Oh, you guys aren't the number one team!" Blah blah. blah. And of course, I was stinking it up, <laughs> and I was like, oh, "Shit, man! I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get on, I gotta get on my shit." And so, stink it up in the first half. Boom, we're down. It's it's like there's like a minute left in the game. We're down. I want to say six points, and it's fourth down, and they're on. They're going in to score on like the forty yard line, and it's fourth and one. We're like, and if they get it, it's game. Yeah. 
and they run this jet sweep toss, whatever whatever yeah, they called yeah, yeah. it. And they got then we stuffed them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we got the ball back with 40 seconds left um, to go win the game. And uh, I ended up throwing a touchdown pass to Trent Vyth. And the, I mean the whole that I mean it went crazy. Wow. And that was like the biggest that was the biggest memory because I mean it, it was the best memory because if that didn't happen, like we would still be talking about that that game. Yeah. And I would it would have been deflating. Yeah, it would have been it would have been awful. But that, there's a lot of great memories. But that's probably the best memory I've had in high school. You know, beating Cathedral with all the hype around and everything. It was a lot of fun. You guys played. Great time. Where where did you guys play your uh, state championship games at? Lucas Oil. Beautiful Lucas Oil. You ever been there? I have. A big ass yeah. stadium. We were just there looking at it today. It's just plopped. When we played Louisville. That was my fourth time playing in that stadium. Isn't that kind of crazy? It's cool. Two and two. Yeah, it's not bad. Keep the Jack saw it today. We were downtown, and he goes, "The beautiful Lucas Oil Stadium." And we were in traffic, and it was raining, and it's just a big brick building. And he, you know, he's not from here. He's not from around here, bro. I've been, I've been to Lucas. Wait, Oil you're not from a, Indiana? A dozen no, 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 no. Connecticut, bro. So that's why he's a Tom Brady fan. But bro, you're siding with him. I, we're Indiana. I, wa- I walk in. I walk into Gillette Stadium, Fenway Park. You know, any TD Garden. It's a rich feeling. So, the so, so you come, like we were driving by, and I'm like Lucas Oil Stadium. That you know the Peyton Manning. You know, like I that I want to give that love there. You know, because I give every time I walk into any of those legendary places, like love. any stadium you walk into, I feel like it, it. I was at the Tennessee Bama game last year. I just went by myself. It was like the most fun I've ever had. Oh, yeah. And just walking in that stadium, soaking that crowd up, oh, yeah. man. What's that atmosphere like? Just playing at Tennessee, man. It's just well. Sorry. Wait, wh- why do why do fans leave at halftime? You want an honest answer? Yeah, like what what is what's going on, man? Like I first game out there, I was like, where are our fans? I think I think the tradition of IU football is. I mean, it's just it. I think it's mixed party school with just not having the history. People get too hammered. People yes. go from the tailgates to the, the people who really go to IU football games are parents. Has to be the number one is an older demographic. And then the second is students who are tailgating. Possibly drinking too much. Exhausted. Lack lack of uh, faith. Lack of... Uh, we're down seven, Ohio State. I know, bro. There's. There, I'm going walking out it, there. Just where, where's our fans? It's got to change. The, the fan base. I mean, it's the history, bro. It's the history. Because I mean, people just are in a certain rhythm here. It Students. hurt a little bit, man. Oh yeah, uh, sure. Did. That shit doesn't happen in assembly hall. No. Hell no. no. And that <laughs> people are sitting. And in the I mean, seats they, after I, the game's basketball over. has been, you know, like really good in, in, in like in the past, past. But you know, I'm a dog on my brother because my brother. But man, they didn't. We were sad for a they little bit. Won, they haven't won the Big Ten yet. In the, in, in the, in the, <laughs> All right, and, we're and, digging that trace. And, and, no, I, and I can, I, I can, chase, I can dog on the basketball players because they know I love them. Yeah. yeah, but like, they don't leave the, they don't leave the basketball Hell games. No, maybe it's because it's inside. Inside, and I think it's just a history thing, and the dedication. We there are people, bro, that live and die IU basketball I know. all I know. day. I know. And I, you know, I know, we we bleed red. You know, what I mean, we're we're IU fans. Sometimes it's tough to watch those games, brother. I know. It's tough to watch football and basketball games. I went to every basketball game, man. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> I just sit there, just tears in my eyes. <laughs> there, hey, <laughs> listen. <laughs> and, like, I, I I mean, I wasn't the biggest IU fan. Like, I I didn't want to. I, I did not. I, obviously, I went to Tennessee. I didn't want to come here. Yeah. Because I was just like, I don't want to be home. Hometown, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to be home. But then I, then I was like, that, that was a dumbest thing I could have done. Yeah. Like, why well, I want to stay home. I'm, I'm coming back home. You what, you what made you come back? Just, I just miss my family, and you know, I knew Trace was coming back, and I was like, I could be in school with him one, one semester, mm. and just all my friends, and you know, I, I had to learn that you can go anywhere to, to you know, pursue your your dreams in in, 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 in college football. You want a ball? Yeah, like you want to get on the field. Hundred percent. I felt field. like I had an opportunity to get on the field here, and I was home. And I could go to every game, of the, every basketball game that Trace played. I was like, and that's a win-win. Hundred percent. He's thirty minutes away. Hundred percent. That's why. That's why and it's that's a why great school. And Coach Allen, I love Coach Allen. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, 
me and Trey were talking about this earlier, but you know, in order for you to make that decision to come to Indiana after being at Tennessee, you got to have a good relationship with Tom Allen. It seems right. What is, what is that relationship like? Yeah. When I went, so I went in the portal and you know, when, when coaches could start recruiting, I, I got a bunch of phone calls, but I called coach Allen. I was like, Hey coach, you got room? You got room for, for one more? He was like, yeah. Cause I was like, <laughs> I already knew where I was going. Like, you know what I'm saying? Kind of, I was like, I want to go back home. And so I'm, I called coach Allen and I was like, Hey, you got, you got a spot. And he was like, yeah, man. I, love I was like, coach, I want to play for you. I've always wanted to play for coach Allen. I love his energy and his, and it's just his vibe. You know, he's just, he loves his players and he cares about his players. And he's so, man, he's like a ball of fire. <laughs> just waiting to explode. And on game days, I love that. Yeah. When you score a touchdown, I love when coaches jump and just give you like a shoulder bump and you know, hell yeah, hit their nose on the helmet because they're so fired up. I just, I mean, I love that. That's where I wanted to be. Yeah. He's, he's straight out of a movie. I uh, know. The clips it's almost you like, see, bro. You got to put some mu music in the back, yeah. a little Star Wars music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we, should, we need to do that. I get fired up. We bro. could do that. I get fired up. You've been pregame speeches. No one knows about them, but are there any? Yeah, they're like, good. Uh, are there any like lines that you know, like that just stick to you that you're like, damn, he said that one time before this game, and I'm like, I'll never forget when he said that. Man, he he always talks about toughness. Mm. Toughness. <laughs> and he walks around. and He's like, toughness. <laughs> And I'm just sitting there like, just my hands are <laughs> going to run through a brick wall. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's just, I love him, man. Yeah, I that. love him. I love him. I think he's doing a great job. Yeah, and that's something I, that you I can think look we're at. Just, we just, we're right here. You know what I'm saying? Feel that. We're right here. We just got to take off. You know what I'm saying? I think, I think the program is going to get a lot better. Yeah. I mean, even just with NIL beginning yeah. to the beginning to kind of become a big thing and more established and less kind of like the wild west i mean the amount of fans that we have just indiana university generally on at, in all facets business and athletics and everything i think nil will will do will do a really really great job and it's all there the base is here we have it we have it 100 yeah. percent. we just need to apply it 100 percent. what oops we speak about that what are your goals while being at indiana is there you know, aspirations of winning certain yeah. championships. We're just going to a Rose Bowl. Because like like, if we go to Rose Bowl, we're going to win the Big the Big Ten. So that's there too. Big Ten, Rose Bowl. And then I just feel like once we, once we start winning, then we're just going to have that winning mentality. And then it's yeah. going to be hard to stop. 100%. Once you have that winning mentality, it's hard to stop a football program. <laughs> Them fans will they'll stay for the second half. Oh, I think, oh yeah. I don't, I don't think they will. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll see, bro. We, we will got, see. I, don't I, don't think think they I think they'll still leave. La the the only really sample size we have, we didn't have fans that year, right? When we no, COVID, there true. were fans we, out there, right? COVID, no? no, there were no fans, bro. We was busting ass then for real. Oh man. <sighs> COVID. He was doing something. Mike Penix. I have a good story about Mike Penix. What about Mike Penix? Look at that dude. I have a good story about Mike Penix. He's killing the game right now. He's doing great. Heisman, Heisman it. candidate, baby. I love it. I love just so, watching uh, athletes succeed. Yeah. Co during COVID year, right? Uh, when Mike Mike had already won the game, uh, the Penn State game, and and him and Fry Fogle were going to uh, uh, Soul Juice. Shout out Soul Juice. That's where I used to be posted up. What's Soul Juice? It used to be this juice bar, and, and some of the owners had a relationship with uh, Penix and Freifogel. Uh, after the game? No, just just not after the game. Just like a couple weeks after the game. Okay. But they were hot shit. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Like, big deal. And one of the owners was like, oh, yeah, come through, because I was doing a pop-up at the Soul Juice place with the clothing and whatnot. And he's like, come through. The boy's about to be here. You know, shoot some promo, whatever. So I come through, and I bring my friend, Sam Crawford. And Sam, just completely oblivious to everything, goes up to Penix two, ga two, two weeks after the game and goes, hey, man, so you play football or something like that? Because he didn't know. He had no clue. It'd be like that it, was, it was bad. What are you it was bad. I, he was quiet. He's a quiet guy. He's a quiet guy. But yeah, Sam's a piece of work. And I thought that was the funniest stuff ever when Sam was just like, hey, man, you play football? And it was just immediately, you know, his face, he goes from, and then just, just. How was campus after? Nuts, bro. People were freaking out. I mean, we were like... Because it was COVID, but... 
guys could still go out, right? Oh, dude. Bar after after I can't stop that. I feel like in any big time college town, any sort of big win, a big upset, the rules become less of rules after mm-hmm. a game. You know, mm-hmm. you kind of just go crazy shit. Dude, UConn, I remember after they won the Natty in basketball this past year. Oh my God, they were breaking into buildings. Oh, no, and I saw shit, that. Bro. That's crazy. So that's crazy. Crazy shit, bro. If but, we win, we about to board up, I mean, faded I'm, for real. The athletes are dead <laughs> asleep because they're so tired. Yeah. yeah. They're like, I've had enough, bro. Yeah. I won the game, go to bed. Yeah. If we get no, a big the upset. Worst, the worst is when it's like away games. It's not even the home stuff. It's oh. like, like we'll be, like the team will be out of Just state. Waiting to get home. Winning, you know what I mean? Like in town, it's an uproar. You get oh. back and the city's burning down. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, when we start, we when we started winning games in Tennessee, I was cool with Hendon. So after our like Thursday night meetings at like nine o'clock, so we out. He was like, "Let's go out to dinner." So we all went. All the quarterbacks went out to dinner. And so I was like, right, I, I'm going to drive with you. And this dude's got an AMG, like <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> it's uh, NIL, man. So I'm like, duh. Like I'm riding with you. And I want to see an AMG. I've never seen it before. We get to his car, bro. There is fans on a Thursday night waiting, like having, like has like, like they have football helmets designed for him. Damn. And I, we walk out, I'm like, dude, you know these people? And he's like, nah. Like, I was like, uh, what's happening? He's like, he's like, first of all, he's like, get in the car, lock the door. Like, we're leaving. <laughs> and so we dead sprint to the car and they, they see, they see him and oh, yeah. they dead sprint to him. <laughs> And he locks the car and pulls out. And like, I swear he was about to hit these fans. I was like, hey, like, and why don't you just sign, you know, some, sign stuff. some stuff? He was like, bro, if I stop and sign, there's going to be a mob. And we won't make it to dinner. A lot of those signing guys, too, are like, they're like, I'm the biggest fan. My my daughter, oh, yeah. Casey, loves you. And then they put it on eBay type stuff. Yeah, he was I, he, would, he didn't like that. He dude, didn't like that's, that that's at some all. Stuff. I had a friend that yeah. actually did that and made Buko. I don't know what he told him. Johnny Manziel. What's his name? Yeah, I was about to say Johnny. Johnny was out here making hella bread. Bro, Buko. And he, I don't know what he would tell those athletes and those actors and whatever, but he would track them down and he would say something to them that would just get them to, to sign the damn, the, sign, sign the autograph. I don't know if he told them that, you know, he, he had leukemia or, or, <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. It was crazy. It could have been all types. <laughs> it could have been all types of diseases. He might. <laughs> tough. Those are tough. Oh, Those shout, are tough. Out, shout them out. They're, they're actually for sale. We sell them in the shop now. That's Joey, right? Turn, turn around, yep. Shit. Flip, flip it Chicago on Instagram. Boom. If you need them, we got them in the shop. Hey, what, Pull up the faded. Bro, I Whatever swear. camera you want. This one right there is focused <laughs> Every on episode, bro, we just find ways to throw in ad reads. Just random. You know? Who's your right one vintage on Instagram? We have, we have no Instagram. sponsors, yet we have five ads every oh, episode. Yeah. But it's a beautiful thing. It's an absolutely beautiful thing. You know what, you know what else is a beautiful thing? I remember, I was at a uh, senior night last year. Trace, about basketball. Yes, Trace. Yeah. Trace. Oh, Trace is given. Trace is given his speech. I, I might not we say got, it, bro. Got, no, no, you can say. It. Well, we mean, got a photo. We got a photo of it. I think I know it. No, I mean, I mean, we, I don't know. I'm, I'm a, I'm a talk more a little emotional side. Yeah, yeah. I saw you crying, dude. I lost it. I saw you tears. I lost. It. I look over and you are full tears and. No. It, I think I was to a point a, where I was like, like, <laughs> like I was I had, had the hiccups. It was like beautiful. It was truly beautiful. It, I don't, I don't. Know it brought what, tears to all our eyes. Dude, I, I don't know what happened. I he started he talking, sweating. and then when he talked about my mom and dad, I lost it. Yeah, because there's so much, there's so much that goes into deep. that. It's so deep, and then I didn't know I was gonna just. I mean, I cried like a baby, man. <laughs> I didn't know. Like, I didn't even know I had that in me. Well, I, thought you were I think just it's. Sweating. I think it's super. Yeah, I had tissues in my hand. Bro. I was like, mom. She was like, she's like, honey, Britt, bring down these tissues. Like, I'm going to need them. I was like, all right, mom, whatever. I'm the one that's using the tissues. I'm the one that's using the tissues. Yeah. Dude, I'm just crying my eyes out, man. I think it's something. Gosh, it was so emotional. It's super special to watch. You know what I'm saying? Like, you watched him. You watched him grow up. You know what I'm saying? Naturally. Like, although you did go into football, like. You know what I mean? Any anybody that you grow up with your whole life, you guys naturally have so many things in common, things that you looked up to, things that you you looked up to that, that you didn't want to do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So to be able to watch somebody go on and succeed when you you guys were literally beating each other's ass on Dude. the basketball court as kids, I think that like that just means a lot. There's like a some feelings you can't explain. Yeah. That's one Dude, of them. that man, that guy's my hero, man. I yeah. love that guy. 
I love him. Great guy. So when, whenever whenever he got that call. A little weird. <laughs> yeah. I remember when I met him first, I thought he was an alien. I was, I was at Evolve. I was at Evolve. I was at Evolve. And I didn't, you know, I'm not I'm not camping out of this car or nothing like that. But I, I was just with, uh, with Trey and Sebastian. And this was sophomore year. I was nobody. I, no mustache, no nothing. No swag. I'm digging the mustache. No swag. Man. Thank you, brother. I, I like appreciate you mess that. with it. Super it's, curly. It's trademark. I'm a trademark the mustache. I love it. Um, I like the cut, too. You talking to me right now? Yeah. We're talking about the McDonald's M airline we got going <laughs> like, on. You right got now. a Maybach sponsorship like, for that. Let me bro. show some love. <laughs> um, but I, I remember uh, I, I, I was walking that. out. I was walking out and I saw Trace and I was like, what the hell? And he got in the elevator with me. I was like, bro, what? I was like, do I shake this guy's hand or like, what do I do? I, I bet was, he didn't say one word, did he? Gotta say something. I said, what's up? He just dabbed me up. And you know, I think, I think he saw some of the stuff and he, he showed me some love at some points and. I just remember being like, man, he doesn't look that tall on 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 the court, but that huge. motherfucker is huge. <laughs> hey. Huge basketball you, players are off the court are ginormous. You said Pause. you said uh, I bet he didn't. I bet he didn't say a word. I cut. I got a text from Trace. The first time I ever cut his hair, he was like, "Yo, I can get a cut." I was like, "Yeah, slide around this nah, time." He's gonna say no. He's, hey, listen, listen. Nah. He slides and gets the cut. Did he show up 30 minutes late? It was probably about 17. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the exact time. Hey, listen, Never listen. on time. It was so funny because then he pulled up and it was like, I cut his hair for probably a solid six or seven more times before we had like one full comp. Like it's like <laughs> yeah. every time he would come, I would like continue the conversation the from last lead. time. You know what I'm saying? Get like, oh, he would open up. Hell yeah. yeah and then, then it got to a point where it was like, He'd come in and have a conversation, and you'd get a giggle or two out of him. You know what I'm saying? But at first, yeah. it was like he'd just come in and be like, "So," and then he'd just sit on his phone. <laughs> most, I could, hey, what he, was it called? Doseki, the most interesting, <laughs> yeah, most yeah, interesting yeah, man yeah. in the world. That's that's who he is. Literally, if you could, three words to describe Trace Jackson Davis, what are they? Goofy. <laughs> Goofy, loving, athletic. That's how you gotta say that. I was like, I was like you gotta yeah. say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that motherfucker can jump. Damn. Athletic. I mean, he's just athletic, you know. Nah, but yeah, I mean, it's. What what is that? What is that relationship meant to you? Just I mean, that's yeah, a very he, he's, open he's answer. Giving me some, like great advice about more about just off the field because he's like, hey, like when you're the quarterback, you know it's gonna get tough. And I was like, I got it. I was, like, I know what to do. And then it hit, and I was like, dude, I don't. What do I say to this guy? What do I say? What do I go to this? Like, if I go to this where I look bad, like, I always just text him. I'm like, yo, what do you think about this? Boom, he tells me. Yeah. And so having that, it's like, it's a, like, I just feel secure. Like, I feel like I'm not going to mess up just because I have someone in my corner so close that he's been through all this stuff. Yeah. And and it, I, I've, I've learned uh, it's a lot easier. You learn things better when you're able to teach it. You know what I'm saying? So you can even see... Um, yeah. The way that he so, was able to, I like that. yeah, I like the that. way that he was able to present himself, like, you know, what I'm saying, his, especially his junior, senior, and that that actual year, like, he presented himself like he knew what he was doing. You know, what I'm saying, I think that that was probably like right around the time that you really started getting a lot of spotlight for yourself, and he was able to give, you know, advice on on how he was able to maneuver through things or get through things, and it it naturally made him, especially when Woodson came around. I think we talked about this. Uh, a show or Woody. two ago, but Woodson will naturally make you believe in what's coming out of your mouth too. Mm -hmm. So then it's a lot easier to just naturally say it because you believe what's coming out. You know what I'm saying? Those who are smart learn from others' mistakes. <laughs> and those, you know, those who are dumb learn from their own mistakes. That's If you can learn from other people rather than learning from jacking up yourself... That's you're the smartest man in the world. I thought I thought you were Sometimes. about to say yeah. me, bro. I thought it, I, <laughs> I thought he said when you said Jackin, I thought you said don't learn from Jack. I was like, what? Right. So, sometimes learning from your mistakes, though, it's different. That, it's, it's different because <laughs> then you get to that point and you're like, dude, no, I'm not doing this again. Hey, you got to feel only that. Way to learn, baby. That's the only way to grow. Yes. Sometimes and and look, check this out. 
the the uh check me out check me out the hard the hardest things that we go through are really like it, they were essential to happen yeah. you know what i'm saying like they they life wouldn't have been the same if it wouldn't have happened yeah you know what i'm saying it's better to learn it early for sure how do you it's good to make mistakes yeah how, how do you go through you know how do you handle a loss how do you handle a loss how do you go through adversity you know, talk to me a little bit about that. I, you know, it's sports. It's I life. Know. Yeah, I don't handle. I I, I don't handle losses, great, because I just blame everything on myself, and I, I, this always has been the thing of mine. Because I don't I, I don't take losses lightly. You know what I'm saying? Like it takes me a couple of days to get over it and be like, okay, I, mean, I understand, and, and, you know, and, and push on. But man, I hate losing. Like when we lost that Louisville game. It was tough. It was tough because we were right there again, just yep. right there, right there. And I feel like I feel like our whole season, we've been right there. You know, obviously last game didn't really go well for us, but everybody has bad games. Hundred percent. I just you know I don't do well taking take like taking the taking losses very well. But you know, again, just having you know my parents and, and you know my whole family in my corner, you know, because they're athletes and they've they know what to do. So I just ask them. I'm like, and they they're real with me. They'll be like, they'll say like, "Hey, you you messed up. Like this is on you." Yeah. Yep. Or they'll say like, "Yo, like don't don't take this to heart. Like you could have been better, but you know, there's a lot of things need a lot to be of in place." In the field, yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying, and so I just kind of I try to do my best to listen to them, but you know, I'm so I'm so damn competitive. I just it hurts. It hurts the soul. That's good though. Yeah. You need that, especially in a leadership position. You need, you gotta you gotta take that responsibility. If it, even, yeah. even when it's not even when it's not yeah. your fault. You gotta you gotta be able to be the person to stand up and show everyone else this is exactly what I could have done better and, and be that guy. So everyone else says, Well what could I what could I do better? Because yeah. oh, once oh, people start pointing fingers, man, it's no, a team, yeah. baby. It's a, a team. Real leader, Everybody's yeah. gotta point take fingers. responsibility. Pointing fingers is bad. A real a real leader is able to accept responsibility for the things that aren't their fault. That's their job. You know what I'm saying? And and that's naturally gonna make everybody take accountability for the things that aren't their fault. You know what I'm saying? If everybody's doing that, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's going to be flowing on the same pace. It's like it's like Cups. Cups came in and said, I don't I don't skip workouts ever. Even when he doesn't have a workout, he doesn't skip a workout. Cups, I he, love that dude. Yeah. He's he's a gangster, bro. He, he is, is about as hard working as possible. G. And yeah. having somebody and having somebody like that 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 just takes pride in what they do and does it consistently, everybody looks at that. I don't care how old anybody is. Yeah. Everybody looks in that and looks at that and goes that's what I gotta do. Yeah, you know what I mean. Just, just having that work ethic, having that, uh, it's, it's communicable. Well, and even the you, you talked a lot about. You said you said something about what Peyton said to you, and just how to uh, like carry yourself, be who you are. When you first came over here, um, you started taking the linemen out to lunch, out to dinner, uh, and you've done it more than once since you've been here. Being able to just kind of like secure yourself as a leader as a leader somebody that they can be comfortable with somebody that you know what i'm saying wants to have a relationship with them um being able to do that with them tell me what it's like uh just coming into somewhere being accepted like making sure that everybody does view you as somebody that wants to be here with them for the greater good yeah yeah hey my thing is man i i, I don't i care less about what what people's you know perspective and opinion on me outside that that locker room is yeah. it's all about for me it's all about what what does this guy think of me yeah as a teammate and as a leader and it starts with the o-line first because they're putting their bodies on on the line every single play just to protect my skinny ass yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying like they they got 300 pound dudes hitting them in the head every single play those are your guys. You know, those are my, like, I would, those are, those are my ride or dies. Like, I would do anything for them. So, treating them to a steak or uh, some food, because they love to eat, you know. That's <laughs> my, <laughs> them big boys. Sorry. That's 100%. my job. You know, that's my job. Yeah, yeah. You know, as a quarterback, that's my job. And as a quarterback, that's, it's my job to protect them and, you know, also protect, you know, the whole offense. I'm not, yeah. I'm not with the defense a lot, but I'll do anything for them too. But, you know, my responsibility is, you know, to get that. Get that offense as uh, as explosive as explosive as we can, yeah. you know. And if if I can put a little juice into them and a little confidence into them, you know, I gotta do that. 
you know, just and then, and that just shit, it, that. it's not just an on the field thing. It's not just an in the locker room thing. It is being able to establish those relationships. Yeah. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Off the field just as well. Yep. <laughs> what yeah. What if underrated? What have you felt is the biggest challenge of taking that next step from high school to college football? The speed. Man, those no man. The dudes out there that we play are fast as hell. They're so fast. <laughs> yeah. Like you don't see them coming. Like sometimes you just well, I'm gonna take this hit right here. Yeah. Can't go anywhere. Cause like you know what I'm saying, you go yeah. somewhere in high school, you're like, oh, I'm just swinging yeah. around. Yeah, it's almost like this ball's not out, man. It's it, the biggest difference was the speed and the decision make decision decision making process that you have to have. Yeah, yep. Like it, it's crazy, and I'm still learning that right now, and I'll Hold probably still learn that throughout my whole career because it's dude. just gonna get faster and faster. It's a never-ending process. Nope. Like this that's is a game you know, that's gonna constantly change. You, love, so you gotta constantly change with it. It's always there's always gonna be challenges. That's what you just gotta life. love. So my coaches told me in mm. high school. <laughs> they say they say there's two, hey, there's he two. Could co- he could be a coach, man. He's no got some inspiring right. words. Inspiration. <laughs> I, I listen to this that. dude every single day that I wake up, bro. Nice, I see sauce. this brother and he's just spitting in you know inspiration. Positive, man. I love it. There's two people in the world. There, there's people go. that find the problems and there's people that fix the problems. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Wow. That, Winners and losers. I felt like I saw that on the wall. Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> no, that one's not on the wall. <laughs> no, yeah, I should put Barber that Barber Kane there. framed faded barbershop quotations. Hey, listen, if, you, if you've if you never been to the shop to see any of the inspiration hanging around, I, w- I would love, I would love to have you in. Um, uh, Talk to me a little bit. You, you brought him up multiple times, and you've just brought up family multiple times. I think you're a person that you know, uses them, relies on them when you need support. Talk to me a little bit about your parents and, you know, what they've meant to you through this entire process, because it is a process. Yeah. So my dad, uh, he played at a powerhouse high school on modern day. You guys ever heard of that? In yeah. California? They're always like the number one team in the nation yeah. in high school. Mm-hmm. They, have so a, they have a Netflix series on them, don't they? I think so. I think so. But... And then he went to go play uh, at Washington State. Wazoo. And then he went and played in the league for four or five years, you know. Um, so, and then my mom is, she owns her own own hair salon. Yeah, and she's 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 a G. She's she's the she's, she's the, the G in the family. <laughs> it is. She's what holds us down. Is your dad hard on you? Is oh yeah. He, you know. He was in high school. Yeah. What about now? He was my whole life. Now it's almost like he's just kind of, he just. He's going to let you take your own steps yeah, now. He just lets me take my own steps now because he's like, bro, I, I, you know, I, I, pl- I pl- this is not a plan. He's not LeVar Ball, but <laughs> <laughs> he's like, this, you know, I, this is. I planted enough seeds. Yeah. It's time yeah, for you this to grow. Is, this is you. Like, this is your time to shine. I'm going to step back and just, just watch you go to work and I'm going to be here for you. Um. And give you advice and I'm going to be here for you when you need me but you know this is your time to learn this is your time to make mistakes and this is your time to you know succeed so that's his method and then my mom you know my mom is like this, this little white girl that just loves to go to the games and you know, <laughs> loves her boys yeah, support loves her boys and yeah. just loves to just you know you know be there you gotta have that and I just lo- I mean I love my mom I love her <laughs> she's a G it's yeah. like Man, she cooks so good too. <laughs> what's great? What, what's what's the best meal? What, if if you if there's one meal, eggs. Okay, straight up. What type? Dippy of eggs? eggs. You ever heard what? of dippy eggs? I mean, no, but is they're, that uh, they're over easy eggs? Okay. You get a piece of toast. You dip it in the yolk. Oh, oh I like that. I see. my mom makes the best breakfast. The she makes eggs. it in like ten minutes too. <laughs> That's the one thing I I, I, I miss. Just you know, like. The, Saturdays or Sundays when you're not you don't have all this and you're in high school and all you have to worry about is football and school you just wake up and your mom's making you breakfast the dippy eggs G. The dippy eggs I have to try that now Shout I gotta go to Tobias mm. it's our, it's our well even just the nutrition. the worry of uh, you know being an adult bills now you got things that i'm sure like you you do have to pay for budget yourself uh you know what i'm saying learning how to invest money that you're making like tell me what what are some of the things that you you know just the longevity of you know your career your life like what are you what are you doing off the field you know what i mean just to kind of take care of yourself yeah like 
someone said it like you just you you grow up so fast like once college hits you you got if you don't grow up then you're gonna fail and it's like i gotta pay bills i gotta pay for wi-fi i gotta pay for um electricity gas like all that stuff like it's like all that stuff my parents took care of and then like you just get in college and you know it's you're up, you know what I'm saying, and you just try to manage all this. But you know, it's it's been good though. I mean, it's 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 just life. You know, you learn from it. You keep you keep going. You keep pushing. You know, just like if you make a mistake, you just keep going. But you know, I feel like I feel like my parents did a like I I feel like I was I was grown in college. I mean, grown in high school. In those aspects of like just doing adult shit all the time. So when I got to college, it, it kind of came easy. Yeah. I don't know why, but it's just, I'm an old soul. Like, I'm a very old, old soul. He said, I did this shit before. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a this very old day. soul. And, and I just, I, for me, is I watch. Like, yeah. I, I can learn just by just seeing things. I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer. I talk, I talk with people about this a lot. There, there's people that just kind of get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, yeah. and 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 as much as I've known you, as much as I've seen you, I've never seen you walk into a room. Didn't matter. The room. Bro, everybody not just do you are people attracted to your energy, but you make sure that you acknowledge every single person that's in the room. Like you give off such an inviting presence. I think that uh you get it. You know what I'm saying? That there's just some people that can form relationships, that can carry themselves in a room, no matter what the room looks like, no matter who's in the room. They know how to be themselves in a room, and I think that that's something that you've learned, whether it be through, uh, you know, your parents, your coaches, whatever it is, you've learned to be confident in how you walk around. Yeah. All right, let's take 15 yeah, minutes. Yeah, let's take a break. Yeah. Let's take a break, and then uh, we'll 15 do... 15-minute break. We'll do like We're going to get a haircut. 15-minute break. Get this video to 500k 500, likes. 500,000 likes. Let's go. Turn uh, me up. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the link in the bio. Mm, what link? I don't know. <laughs> Better be careful. Might be a faded link. Or who's your I want OnlyFans? I need a fade. That's what the ladies said they wanted. They wanted the who, they, they wanted, wanted the, the OnlyFans. They fans. wanted the close ups of the mustache and the kissy lips <laughs> and the whole thing. Hey man. Well. Hey man, they want crew necks. They want yeah. the fat. <laughs> they want crew necks. No, want crew necks. No. I, I got a question for you. Do, you. do you have any uh, Hoosier A1 vintage beautiful stories to potentially share on the spot right now to kick this second segment off? I actually, I have a good business story with actually Trace. Um, I was thinking about this earlier. One time, I, I, ran, I ran a, a business and I still run a business called Gonzo Hydraulica where we print. Uh, new designs on vintage blanks i ran it with my roommate and we would do uh, local events to promote the brand you know like band events and things of that nature and i think this was our debut event um the day of hoosier Asteria. and i hit up all the guys on the basketball team that i had relationships with and i didn't get any responses and i remember i was like oh wait i have, I have trace's number I, maybe i'll hit him up and maybe you know just maybe you know shot in the dark maybe trace will help me out and i just Remember, I hit him up, and he just immediately was like, I got you, bro. Just no problem, no nothing. Just just reposted it. And it was like the biggest, it was the craziest thing to me because at a certain point, I realized, like, that's who it takes to fill that role. And even though, like, some of the, like, the guys under him are, you know, kind of like in the, in the team that didn't have that, that leadership role or that thing, they didn't care. But Trace, as the big man, like help me out in a major way and it's just like hmm that's like a very common thing in business is that you can't relate to or you can't get through to some of the people 
you know, but that one person who's in that position who has made it and understands, you know, will will fill that role and will help you out when you need it. And that help meant, you get to that next level. Hundred percent. That just meant the world yeah. to me, man. It's about, it's just love too. Like, it is. You know what I'm saying? Some people just don't really. Give I, shit I that's <laughs> it, and that's about other people. Hundred percent. I hate that, man. Especially in the business world, like there, there's, a, in my opinion, one thing that I've learned uh, the last year of my life. I've received, I've, I've been given so much more from me just giving myself. Yeah, yeah giving. Yeah. When I say, like, I don't, Cause it's I don't want nothing, I don't expect anything, but I promise I'll give you my shirt, my socks, my word, my bro. Just being real. Bro, 100%. Like, and it's like being able to see what the universe is giving back just for me being being faithful and giving. That's what the world lacks, man, is just love. A lot of people think about the world pragmatically. A lot of people think about the world and they think about their interactions with people in a pragmatic, practical manner. So what they do is is they is they they think they think what can I be? Who can I be? Right? They think who can I be to get this person to like me? Who can I be to get this person to like me? But what they don't realize is that if you if you think about your interactions with people about who you should be and and what you should say, then what you're getting people to do is like a mask. Yeah. Those people don't like you. They just like who you think they would like. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They like the way you talk to them when you're trying to appeal to them. <laughs> Tell me about it, Tom. <laughs> I'm rocked. They don't like you. You know is what I mean? Tom that's Allen what, we're that's, talking to right that's now? The, that's Toughness. the difference between people who are really successful in a, in a major way and people who have a business mindset. Is People who are successful in a real way, they put themselves out there and they show people their hearts and, and they don't hold back and they tell people the truth. I know every single time that I talk to Kane, I'm going to get honest responses and that's the most valuable thing you can get i don't want someone to fucking suck my dick for 30 minutes i want someone to tell me the truth hey hey, hey. Uh, you can't get that boy is everywhere. going he's spazzing right now i don't uh, love it you can't get that everywhere and I that's love real it. shit like for real like you're my brother for real i because, appreciate because that because that's what's real and if motherfuckers tell like i got friends in the music industry and they'll always hit me up and they'll and you know people who really do shit and they'll hit me up and they'll send me a song because they know that if I listen to the shit I'm not just gonna be like yeah that's hard bro you know what I mean we need less that's hard yeah. bro we need people who give legitimate like just we, real shit check that's what this we out need. Yeah. we need we need mother we need people that can handle that boy got it. a band-aid facts with balloons on say it. It, bro. facts you hear me we we need oh, so, bro, there's a lot of soft people in this world. And I think that I think that that's a big differentiation between leaders, not necessarily followers, but people that don't know how to it. lead. I think it all, you know what it what it all comes down to is how you were raised, how your parents raised you. That's literally if your parents raised you right, and your parents raised you, you know, hard, but not you know what I'm saying not aggressive, but like yeah. prepared you my for the world, real world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my dad, big, big guy. My dad. It, did your dad like wake you up at like? You know, four or five a.m. Like, hey, we're doing hill sprints and shit. No, 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 no. He, we didn't do that. We <laughs> like, how did, how did you, you talk about how you were raised? Like, my dad. What, what were the things that he was doing that it, you know? My dad always said out. no. Facts. Always said no. My mom always said yes. Interesting. I have a question. What if you, if your dad said no, and you said why? What would he say? Because I said so. Facts! What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> bro, I remember being pissed off at a bitch, bro. Because I said be, so. My dad would be awesome. You know what I'm because saying? Because I said so. And what are you going to say? Yeah. Pops, can, no. I go, can, I spend the night, can I spend the night at my friend's house? No. Why? Because I said so. Facts. <laughs> Facts. Oh, man. But that gets you, that gets you ready for that the real back, world. Like, you know PTSD, what I mean? Like, PTSD, man. Like, wait. <laughs> well, can I get no, a that's loan? A, that's no, that's right. Yeah. Why? Because I see what you're talking about. I said so. Facts. And it's just you got to put yourself. I don't know. That's hey, real hey. shit, though. Then That's you pack the. Shit. Then you no, pack that, the bag. That, that turns. That turns you every time you hear the word no. Like you don't ask why because you think it's just because they said no. You know what I'm saying? It's like you ever oh. pack the bag. Oh, bro. With listen, the toy. Oh, listen, my. no, you ever no. Pack the bag Fifty bucks. Toy? Four T-shirts. Two pairs of socks. Bro. Hey, I'm gone. I packed the bag a lot. I'm I gone, you, bro. I'm my running. parents pissed me off, or when I was a little kid, when they pissed me off, I packed the bag, <laughs> put my toy and my pillow in there. 
Hey, no, I, told I, you don't my, think I've, I don't think I made it down the street. Though. I told you my mom. My mom used to beat my ass. I remember this one time specifically. Hey, she came out of she came out of her bedroom and she was she wasn't a mean woman, you know what I'm saying? But she could be fucking mean. Yeah. So she comes out of her bedroom one day and I, and I was supposed to clean up the dishes or something the night before after she went to bed and I was staying up late, whatever. I didn't do it. So now me, young, I'm. Oh. Up there in my Not boxers. Doing the dishes. Hey, about to get a Been bowl there. of cereal with the last couple dishes we got. That, <laughs> that, <laughs> you see hey, all listen, the dishes. I'm already known. But then you go straight to the cabinet. You're like, nah. You're like, well, my blood, my uh, blood started rising when she came out of her bedroom. Like I knew what time it was. She starts cooking this coffee up. She goes to get a coffee mug. There's no coffee mug oh. for her to use. Hey, so she grabs this reps. regular glass, right? Like, little, little, just a regular cup. She starts pouring her coffee in, and she starts talking to me like, why did you not? Long story short, I get coffee thrown at me. She kicks me out of the door. Listen, I'm in, my, I'm in my box. How old are you? Right? Uh, I was like 13, 14 years old. I got, Young jit. I got like four little, I got three little brothers and sisters, two step brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. right? I'm on the balcony and it's like steps going down in my boxers. You talking about packing a bag with your fucking toy and shit? <laughs> hey, she's, she's <laughs> pushing me down the stairs talking about don't come back till you got some respect, motherfucker. Like, Real shit. Hey, I, I'm yeah. walking down the street, my boxers, phones down, <laughs> in, my, down in my bedroom, 13 years old. Like, damn, like, what am I about to do with life with now? <laughs> hey, my Man, put the fear in me, bro. Real you shit. guys, you guys. My mom was a little crazy, too. What about her was crazy. You get the wooden. Do you ever got the wooden spoon? Anybody? I got the hand when I was a kid. My I mom used to give. My mom used to give me the wooden spoon with the circle in it. Hey, mm. my mom. My mom used to give me this Tear look. Hair. Uh, Wait, what's the wooden spoon? It's like a, it's, like the the, the mixing get. spoon. You know what I'm saying? And she'd knock you on your knuckles. She'd hit, you know, spank you. Let's I would never get. I would <laughs> never get smacked with it. I would always have to hold my hand out, and she'd smack the tips of my fingers with it. Mm. You got soap, soap in the mouth. Yeah, I got soap in the mouth. I call my sister fat. Liquid <laughs> soap. Bro, I was a worse. bad ass kid, man. Yes, like, man. I was a troublemaker. Well, get. I can see it. I never, I never had much trouble in school or like with my parents or whatever. But the one thing I always got in trouble for was telling my teachers off. I always get, I always always get pissed in class or like in the hallway. I remember one time. Hey, still to this day, he's like, fuck society. <laughs> not, not, not like society, but like I'm that. Not real. No, nah, but like, but like. Here we I'm, go. But like for me, it's like I'm that motherfucker. You're not gonna tell me to do shit. Like I, working retail, like doing shit like this. I'm not supposed like, to be here. You know what I mean? Like facts though, <laughs> facts. Like I'd be working retail. I have a 30 year old telling me what to do, and then I'd do what he did, and you'd be like, "Oh, you did it wrong." It's like, bro, you gave me the wrong instructions. This is why you're here, and I'm about to dip. Like you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I always just was like, I mean, obviously I take advice from people, but like Kanye, Kanye said it. I don't take advice from Kanye. people less successful than me. I, don't, I, hey. I can't do that. I can't listen to somebody who I look at you. I look at some or some people. And I go, man, I can't listen to you because if I listen to you, who the fuck am I? Like, this is not where I'm gonna be in in ten years, twenty years. You know what I mean? If bro, if everything goes to shit, I'll just yep. move out the country. <laughs> like, I'll go to Vietnam and live like a king on on twenty bucks. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, this, you know, there's Vietnam. so much. There's so much. <laughs> there's so much. So many layers to this shit that people don't even don't even perceive. That was my thing. It's like, I'll take advice from people who can really give me real Boy advice. Shook. I'm sorry. See that? I like, I'll take advice from people who really can give me good advice, but I'm not going to take shit from just any motherfucker for real. I feel. That's all I got to say. Taven, what, what makes you happy? <laughs> Non-explicit answers only. <laughs> <laughs> I think just... Yeah. Might get deep. We can go deep. I'm what down. makes me happy? My family makes me happy. Hanging out with my my brother, my sister, and my and my parents. That makes me happy. Um, obviously, football makes me happy. Very stressful. Um, hanging out with my friends makes me happy. Yeah, I love those guys. Friends are good. I love them. I just lo I, you know what makes me happy is just having. Fun with 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 real people that you know that 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 love you, and that would do anything for you, and just doing stuff that you know that that you love to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like what you're made to do. I, you know, I I like to go snowboarding. I like to 
I like to go bowling, dude. We gotta all go go bowling sometime. I'm so, quite the bowler. I'm I love, lie. I lo- yeah, I love to go bowling, man. I just like doing active things. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Momentary yeah. living. Yeah. Be- yeah. Being able to acknowledge what you're doing right now. You know what I'm saying? And appreciating it. You know what I'm saying? Nice. And some people. That's what. It, that's what. What it sounds like you're saying. You know what I mean? That's yeah. what I took from what you just said. I think. Uh, the what being makes with you your happy? people, being with your family. That was a crazy question, bro. No, I think happiness is a really good question, and, and that answer gets to gets to a lot of like really deep things because if I know is, what this, I was doing, bro. This is gonna this is like, gonna sound crazy. This is gonna sound crazy for real. But this is, this you is real sounded shit. crazy seventy five percent of this. <laughs> Whatever. This is real shit for real. This is real shit. When the ice age happened, humans were apes, right? <laughs> no, listen, follow me. Deep. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. I'm that was the last thing I was expecting to come out of this. I'm man. locked. No. Fuck up. I'm locked, right. bro. I'm so locked, Wait, bro. Listen, I'm bro. so Both locked. Don't want to listen, but this is real shit. When, when the ice age hit, humans were apes, and and the apes that couldn't survive were the people who could not work in a group. So every single human that survived and evolved were people who were able to work inside of a community and assign, assign, you know, roles to people and, and figure out how to work with people. That's the prefrontal cortex. That's what made us who we are, is the ability to, to work with people. That's why we get so much joy and so much purpose out of these people. And in, a, in the modern world, it's so rare, but that's like the calling of every, every great man, every great person is to find their people and, and do what, you know, at least survive in the best way possible mm-hmm. you know like that's like the man and the dog you know what i mean like the dog the dog is our best friend because we literally uh, we just made ourselves with them like we melded through time you know what i mean mm-hmm. and it's like being able to be personable and being able to fill roles with people and and figure shit out as a group is what makes literally what makes us who we are it's what makes us great you know what i mean it's not opposable thumbs i think you're great thank you brother i appreciate that bro tom brady is great oh, oh, he, no dude. he was preaching on this bro he i like that tom brady? i'm sorry bro can i just say this can tom i just say brady? this i think aaron Rodgers is better facts Aaron Rodgers was off the let yerkies, me make, Let me make my point, because it, it was... <laughs> dude, he's further. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> he was off the yerkies, that dude, Roger Realms. Roger Realms. Dude. He was off the yerkies. Roger's what do you got to say so about Tom good, Brady, dude. bro? That he he gives all of his credit to his teammates in, in being a part of a team. It was always about the team, right? And the people that he was around. That's exactly yeah, but what you're he, saying. Dude, Tom Brady, Ooh. great teammate. Great teammate. But man, he like when it came to like sometimes he you know how do I say this? Not as good as Peyton Manning. No. Yeah, you Tom right. Brady oh, cares what? about the team, gave all the credit to his teammates. But sometimes, man, he that he was a selfish motherfucker, man. Like he wanted yeah. like nobody's wanted getting this ball. Like put the ball in my hands, we're gonna win this game. That's how you, know you got what I'm saying? Be. Like you have to be a leader, but you also have to be like, dude, like Give me the fucking ball. Yeah, he was, he was, yeah, he was that motherfucker. He was not gonna have anybody get in the way of him in that game, and he did it. That's the thing is he, and not many people have the confidence to do something like that. You know well, what I mean? That's what, say, that's, that's what that's what me. took. That, that's what took some of those coaches being okay with him. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what do you want to do, Tom? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, no, but but it, like. Tom was gonna let them know, like hear about it if it didn't yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. Hell so yeah. it's almost like, hey, Tom, you got this. Yeah. Because like I'm not dealing with your shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm I'm just spazzing right now. Obviously, no, no, I don't know a- if this is true, but like this is what this is like the vibe that I get. Yeah. And you gotta have you gotta be like that to be great, man. Dude, that takes confidence to be like, coach, give me the damn ball. Like, Dude. do it yourself. Take the rock and just. Well, and that's, roll. Yeah. that's and, and those. Like, if it fails, it's gonna be on me. Yeah, I that's I that's like that. those plays that you see where it's like. Somebody runs the play out to the huddle, and they're like, this is what we're doing. And then you see the quarterback in the huddle like, fuck that. We're doing this. You know what I'm saying? All right, y'all listen. Scratch that. No, none of that. Yeah. No. Has that happened yet here? Um, it almost did. Did, did you want to do it, it the Louisville game? Yes. That, oh, the, it, I, I've talked about I'm, it a couple I'm, times. I, I don't have – I'm not on that level. Yeah, no, yeah. I hear that. Yeah. So I, you know, and I respect coaches. Decisions. But even after, even after you dive it in there, from my, from an outside perspective, me watching the game, in my head, I'm like, Taven wants the ball. 
You know what I'm saying? Like he just he just stretched out for the pylon, like send him yeah. right up the middle, send him, push him in, whatever we got to do. You know what I'm saying? I know that that would have been like a a high energy, yeah. high level play. Yeah. You know what I but, mean? But you know, it, even if it was like you know how it didn't work. Yeah, you know, yeah. Everyone's like, dude, just run the dive. You know, like run the quarterback sneak. You know, as as an offense, bro. I mean, we still got to execute the play that we're Period. Given, you know what I'm 100%. saying? 100%. We still got to get the ball in there. And, and as an offense, we we know that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and we did a good job not pointing fingers. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. Like if, the, if, the, if the play that the coach gives us doesn't work or, or is not what we like, let's execute the the play that he did give us yeah. at the best of our abilities. 100%. That's what Because yeah, maybe they are right. You know maybe saying? the yeah. coaches are right. We didn't, we didn't execute the, you know, the fullback, whatever you guys call it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not going to give out the play, but. You know, run, the run the four sneak, the full back dive. We gotta execute that. If we executed 100%. it, we would be in the end zone. That's y'all's if job. We, if we push the defensive line, and we, if I, you know, got the ball to the running back a little bit faster, we would score. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 100%. So we can't point fingers. Yeah, not at all. You can't. But man, 100%. I was gonna spaz if if, if he called if he called uh, quarterback sneak, man, and, and we scored. <laughs> oh, it was over. We would have tied the ball game, went in overtime. And actually, no, our defense would have stopped them. And then we would have got the ball back, kicked the field goal. Defense is looking good this year. Yeah. For sure. We got to do it. As an offense, man, we got to give them a little bit of juice, man. We got we to score the football. But we're yeah. going to – we obviously, we we lost our offense coordinator. Um, and it was not all, all on him either. Like, as a whole offensive group, like, we didn't do, we didn't do well. But – he has that role, and, and you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like quarterback. Like, if the yep. offense doesn't work, it's going to be on him, yeah. even if it's not on him. So, you know, we lost him, unfortunately. But love Coach Bell and everything that he's done. I love him as a person, love him as a coach. But, you know, we have a new offense coordinator about to step up, and I feel like we're going to be – going to be explosive what are the adjustments you guys are making i know you can't share too much craziness um, but just you know we're just going to take screen. take you know watch the watch the games back and you know take the things that we do well and do more of it you know what i'm saying and, and then take the bad things that we don't that we don't do well and get rid of them. i was playing against ohio state with that defense and, and you know just Dude, I was week one first, first game yeah, with indiana first kind of college game First kind of college game, and I was just, I was like, damn, I didn't play Ohio State. But, but no, and I was like, dude, I'm about to go out there and kill these boys. Yeah. But, you know, it's Ohio that's just State. The, that's just the mentality that I had. Yeah. But, and I think we could see that. I, I we, Watching we, that we, game, bro, man, we, we, I could see it. We could have, we, 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 we were, we were in there. I, I can't wait to play him. Yeah. Play him again, man. I, I can't wait to play Michigan next week, honestly. We match up very well with them. It's gonna be, a, dude. What like opportunity that we have to go in the big house, man? Yeah. That's the, like, that. That's that. that. That is the shit that makes football fun, man. Yeah. We get to go to a historic place and and have a, a and potentially win. You know what I'm saying? Even I mean, we got the opportunity. A lot of people don't get this, man. We got an opportunity to play a, a game that we love. No, we have the opportunity. You know, God's blessed us with the ability to, you know, be ha- like have athleticism, go out there and, and you know just play a game. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So you can't take that for granted. But man, I can't wait to go in the big house because you know a lot of talk has has been around. You know, Tennessee Stadium, Penn State Stadium, Michigan Stadium, <laughs> Nebraska, LSU at night. We played at LSU at 12 o'clock. So we didn't. I didn't get to experience the night game mm. in Death Valley, but a lot of people said Penn State is is the loudest out of all of them. Really? I'm always gonna be a ride or die ten, like Tennessee all the way because you were there. The Alabama game was unreal, bro. They had the cigars out ready to go, right? As <laughs> Un- unreal. I'm Every ne- single person in the stadium, I'm like, where'd you get I that? I can't even hear myself think. That's how <laughs> loud. I'm like, they're already ready to party, bro. They do it different. <laughs> That's how loud. It took me 45 minutes to go. To one end zone to the locker room. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised by that. I just walked down on a field. I didn't, bro. I didn't, I didn't see you. I didn't see you. I just I was just chilling. I was Tra- Trace and Race were there, dude. They were having a great time. You, like, you guys took a picture with Peyton yeah. down in the thing. Yeah. That was awesome. Dude, I saw he was, that, man. He was so gone. It was hilarious. <laughs> oh man. He was so gone. 
<laughs> like it looked like he'd been drinking the whole game, but it was so funny. Was, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't want to talk about it. Man, it was so Peyton. it was so funny. He he was having a great time. Oh yeah, great That's time. Peyton's that bro. guy, bro. Peyton is that guy. Yes. I, I want to meet Peyton one day, for real. I don't know what I'd say to him. He probably would tell me he doesn't care about my business, <laughs> like Mark Cuban. <laughs> All right. This is a funny question. My little brother told me to ask this. If you're pl- if you had the ability to play a game of one on one against Trace, I would win. In Assembly Hall, packed house. Ooh, man, would you do blood it? Would be flowing. Game to seven. Twos and threes. What can Trace not do? Travel and carry. No. <laughs> it's a free game. Basketball. It's it's a free game. So he could post play up. Play it as you oh, would do yeah, it in the backyard. Play play that one on one game. Who gets ball first? You Are you saying first? that if he touches the ball first, it's then he, over if he touches the ball. Facts. But if you touch it and first, there's fouls. They, they'll call fouls. Yeah, there's yeah, a we ref. got a ref. We got a couple. It's a packed house. This is this is IU Purdue, look, but it's man, on a different look, level. Look, man, look, look. Who gets the ball first? You I'll can give get it to you. First, me. Yeah. That changes. <laughs> you know why Trace can guard guards pretty well, like point like point guards and shooting guards. What? Because he's been guarding me his whole life. <laughs> <laughs> I he's swear. Also so fast. He's so fast. <laughs> no, size, that's why. You, that's obviously Trace is very athletic, and you know he can play good defense. But he's been guarding. I could talk. I I could be a little confident <laughs> in basketball because I don't play basketball. So that's why I'm. I like that. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> I won't ever say this. I won't ever say it about the my craft that I do, like I play football. But I'm gonna say it because I don't play basketball. He can guard guards pretty well because he's been guarding me his whole life, and I've been I give him the work sometimes. I got Ooh. videos. Yes, <laughs> Look, yes, videos. I'm not saying I'm not saying Trace is I'm better than Trace basketball because he whooped my ass yeah, for sure. But I'm saying like as a younger brother, like I could say like. You know, I got him a couple times. I got him. I've I've got him a couple times, and I prepared him for the Big Ten guards. <laughs> God, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's a, a bit of a that's a bit I of a high know. shot, maybe. You know no, what I'm but bro, it it takes it takes just a certain individual. It, you might not be the greatest basketball player, yeah. but you can get in his head. Is there trash talk? Is oh, there, there's trash it, talk. It, Man, I would pet. Guys, pay to see that seven, seven bro. Game I, to seven. Dude, I think that's a lot of people would. If it was philanthropy, that, yeah, that's a boxing match. Put that shit on, you know. Pay sell views. some pay per views, you know. Hey, dude, halftime celebrity boxing I match. Think I in would, assembly. I would, I would lose because the minute he, if I miss, I would have to score seven straight points to win. If he touches the ball, it's it's, it's game over. He's cooking. Yeah. Barbecue chicken. Yeah. Just Barbecue of chicken. <laughs> Like, and there's fans, so he's not joking around. Barbecue chicken. <laughs> but if you touch that ball first and you make that and, first and shot, I get you hot. see one. And I get hot. You it's, see one go Chef through Boyardee, a door. Chef bro. <laughs> Chef Boyardee. Dude, I got a clip. I got I a clip. I believe you. <laughs> I actually have a clip. I, I mean. I can't jump the highest, but I got a clip. Hey. I see. I see what you're I doing. I can't jump the we, highest. I, I, saw that, I saw that video of. You know, they do the, the football guys. You guys always go in there early in the season. And you shoot around a little yeah. bit, and they promote it. And I saw I you talking. Coach. I say, sometime I'm going to go up to Coach Woody one time. If Knock on wood, but for some, some, some reason we lose all of our guards, I don't know, to some, a, sick, a sickness or something. <laughs> like, everyone gets sick. Food poisoning. <laughs> and I got to go. Like Coach Woody, like, I'm ready. You're the next guy up is what you're saying. Put me Look, in coach. I can, if I went out there right now against any team, I could hold my own. I, I would probably score zero points, but I wouldn't turn the ball over. And I'd get the ball to the big man. Where does this confidence come from? Just because I've, I've played, I don't think you guys understand. Like, I've played ball. Like I, I, I'm no, I, uh, no, we know you can hoop. And I'm I think a, it's a beautiful thing, the confidence. Like the confidence comes from I don't play this sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could just talk. You <laughs> that's just what talk. that's yeah. what it comes from. I mean, I was thinking you were like, oh, I could just get the ball to the big man, not turn it over. I was like, I could probably do that. <laughs> <laughs> but like, if someone's really guarding, like locking up, guarding me up, like I feel like I can hold my own. Like you know, get, you know, get around them, just protect the ball, and you know, give the ball to Malik or 
Is it is it Kalel or Kal- Khalil. Khalil? It's Khalil. It's I thought Khal- it was Kalel. Khal- it's Kel L. I thought it was Kel L. Kal- 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 Just call him Ware. I'm gonna call Mr. him Mr. K- Ware. I'm gonna call him K. Great guy, by yeah, the way. Like Great guy. K W. Good dude. No, but I can hold my own. Trace would win. There's the question. There's okay. the answer. Yeah. I agree. We'll, we'll wait to put that little Barbecue part chicken. right there in at the end, so people think you're gonna say you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a long answer. That is a long answer. That's okay. No, that I was. I just needed to explain myself. Just that was barbecue chicken. Barbecue chicken. Dippy eggs. I want to yeah. try the dippy eggs, G. I'm Dude. not gonna lie. I might have to mess with that. Mama Jackson, Gucci right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Sure I want Gucci Mama right. Jacksons. I should have played like club rugby or something like that. I should have played a sport. Mama Jackson will get you right. So I can get the dippy eggs. I thought you, uh, thought you played soccer. I played soccer and rugby in high school, yeah. I'm tough. My boy Matt plays rugby. Toughness. Toughness. Our linebacker played rugby. Yeah. Where, where linebacker did you go to school? Did you go to school in Indiana? Center Grove. He went to Fishers first and then yeah. Center Grove. Fishers has a fantastic rugby team. Yeah. I played for Pike. We were ass. Mm-hmm. We were so bad. But it's a great great sport. We beat Tech, though. You know uh, Chris? <laughs> Chris who? Played on the basketball team. Tall guy? You know. Chris, a guard, a guard <laughs> number six. I know Lawan. 20, no, you, you, so you're 23 years old, so yeah. he's probably. I'm the same age as Trace. Oh, same grade? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Chris was in your grade. Um. I know Lawan. I know Lawan and Amani. But you know, senior year, Trace's senior year, when they played Pike, Pike, they, Pike, Pike I w- smacked them. I played them. that game. Pike smacked them. Yeah, we got busted, bro. And the center for our team was Fruity. <laughs> he was guarding Trace. I think Trace might just want to get physical. You know what I mean? Some sort of dude. They some they, sort of des- thing going they on. destroyed us. Yeah, Lawan. I don't know if you know Lawan, but Lawan was that like athletic, skinny, bouncy. No, no, no. He was a shooter. Straight shooter. Did he did he hit like six threes? Yes. Yeah. He's tough. He's tough. And he goes. He, I think he, I he guarded him. I think he barbecue chicken. Yeah. He, he, I, I think I could take him. But he was jacking me up. I, I hurt my ankle earlier. You know. You know what I'm saying. I'm out of the game for a while. But you got any? You got any trace one on one stories, or any trash talk moments? Any words? So any- yeah. So the, I think. The most recent time we played one on one. It's this year, actually. It was me, Trace, and my dad. And it 21? Was just, no, it was just king of the court. Mm. Trace scored 63. <laughs> I, I scored 30, 39. And my dad scored 17. That's not bad. And these are I, like... these I, are like. This, I think that's respectable. This isn't like, you know, patty cake. Like, this is... Real I think, deal. I think Trace elbowed... I think my dad had a bloody nose. Yeah. Like, it, 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 it was... It was real, but that was probably the, like the most fun I've had. Like it was just playing ball, and Trace just got out of Indiana. He was preparing for the draft, and so I got to see like okay, because I've been every time I play him, man, he just gets better. Yeah, and you're like, all right, you won't hit that slash. <laughs> I'm like, where the hell did this come from? <laughs> no, what people don't understand is like, oh, if Trace can't shoot. Why doesn't Trace shoot a three? Bro, he's he's got a clip, man. Yeah. Why would you shoot? People couldn't guard him. I know, Nobody, I know. Could, Nobody guard could guard him. him. I know. Why would you shoot at that point? But you would just love you love to see him hitting like three threes. Yeah, hundred percent. All assembly would have. Agiza and I shot a video um, with him, and and while we were shooting the video, we were in assembly. It was like a little faded commercial, and uh, Agiza kept telling him like, "Yo, shoot it from here." You know what I'm saying? And then he would record it, and it was literally like. Agiza goes, dude, how are you doing it on command? You're just like, every time I tell you to shoot, it just, it goes in. You know what I'm saying? It was like at least 15, 20 shots where it was like some, uh, there, there were times where it would miss, but it was like, if he told him to go to a different spot and shoot, wham, wham. It was from three all the way close to half court. It was like, you just don't shoot very often. That's the, that's Why all would it was. You? I think it's because he eats nerds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's crazy, bro. Nah, but for real, like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And Trace, oh, man. <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta cut that out, bro. <laughs> Senior no, you year, gotta put it in. <laughs> unguardable, <laughs> completely unguardable. So if I'm if I'm taking the if I'm unguardable in a certain area, whether that be three or on the inside, you and I would bust your ass for sure. Barbecue but chicken. let me let me keep going. 
Celebrity. Wait till this bitch is off. I'm going to get you But right. I'm saying if, if I'm hitting, if, if we're in a real game where we need to win, and I know that if I take it to a certain spot and I can do a move and I can score every time, basically, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to pull up from anywhere hey, but there. That's, You're going to your spot. Hey, You're getting to your spot. And he's the kid, good he's the kid in Mortal Kombat that would get the glitch and just keep pressing square. Facts. You know what I'm Mortal Kombat. Keep kicking his shit at me. I know, know what Mortal Kombat is, but you guys play the game? No. I, all I play is 2K. We should start playing 2K on he's the, the pod. Right now. He's I'm like, lost, bro. I'm so confused. Game. You're going to get made fun of right now. No, Everybody in the comments games. is going to be like, dude, you don't play Mortal Kombat? Yeah, all the How old young are you? you about Isaiah Thomas. I don't play it now, but like when I was younger, hell yeah. Dude, that was you know, the only you know, game that you know, was out. You know what was the shit back in the day? The Wii. Bro, we was hard, bro. I'm not going to lie. The, swi- the Switch has really taken over, and it's like the same thing. It will never be like the Wii. It's it was better. Tough. The white box Wii. There it's was something better. about it, bro. The like, just, too. I didn't have one, but the my next door cool neighbors about did, it was bro. was tennis and bowling. What, what was it? Wait, what was bro. It, it, just everything. What, bro, it was like, home runs, bro. Home run derby was fun. Derby. What is Hear your favorite out. Wii game? What is your favorite Wii game? Disc. Not like specific, like <laughs> sports games. If it's not Resident Evil. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> my favorite Wii, man. They had so many Wii Sports. Like, they had the Wii Sports and they had the... Resort. The Adventure Parks went hard, bro. They did. The Resort. All the rafts and shit. The Resort resort. when you could actually play, like, basketball. Like, the three-point competitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be cutting up. Getting the steals, G. (laughs) Skabink! Skabink! Yes, bro. (laughs) I like dunking that. Sometimes I'll mess the dunk up, though. I get too excited. I'd be playing the the archery. Mm Mm-hmm. I like the dog fight. There's so many games, though, man. There was... Ping pong? Yeah. I'd probably go through right now. There was like Duel, bro, yeah. archery. Uh, what about like Mario Kart, wake, man? Wakeboarding, yeah. I did Mario Kart. We I don't know if I had a Mario I'm Kart. Telling you, era. Mario Kart on the Switch. Listen, I just got a projector screen in here. Switch, <laughs> bro. I'll bust your ass in the Switch here as soon as we get off this. We gotta get the Mario Kart Ouija for real. Yeah, the Wii. The, with the with no with the John. Oh, steering wheel. The steering. The steering wheel. The Switch oh. one is better. No. Nope. I'm just trying to put you on nope. game, dog. It's the same thing. It's, I it, played the Switch. We before. made the Switch. I know, but it's nothing. It's like saying, what, what is it like saying? Like, it's like, like saying, you know like, it's like saying, can replace the old NBA jams, It's like saying the new helmets, it's like saying it's, the new helmets they got yeah, aren't, it's it's like, they're not better than the last ones. It's like saying, like, the old revolutionary 2K24 helmets. 2K24 is better than 2K17 because there's more shops. Yeah. Because there's like nothing will ever it's better because nothing of the graphics ever. and you can control your person better. You can nah. see LeBron's tattoos and shit. Let's talk about 2K. You can see the sweat dipping d- dipping down his forehead. Why is they the, fixed his hair? Why hairline. is the map so big on 2K20? 2K24. I don't even play online. Play no, I mean I I I, I don't play online. Nobody plays it. I just play one. I just one. shed him. You know. I'm a three Bro, point you hunter. Not hard at 2K. <laughs> I'm tough. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> my players, my players got it, man. I dropped 66 with Bob, Bob Cousy in one game. But I don't play like quick games, bro. I, I only play like my car- like my career, like Park. Oh, that's good. Me, Race, What's uh, your Armand, score? and Chili, and Trace, and yeah. uh, Charlie Ogega. We always play. Yeah. Do you have a score on there? Is there like Overall. a personal score? A rating? Overall. I'm a, I'm a 93. Right now. Damn. It's a 99. Damn. But you gotta pay some cheddar. To get Are you like oh, a, yeah. you, you have to pay cheddar to get that higher? You just gotta oh, work. Yeah, that's you how everyone keep, does it. Yeah, you, some, like, like you play and, and you make game money, or you have to really put cheddar. Or you can just it. buy it if you want to do it quick. You gotta yeah, buy it on some like virgin shit. On some nil. <laughs> 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 on some investment, <laughs> sell on your players. Two K, you get you get paid. What about Fortnite, man? What? Hold on. Here's a Here's for yeah, you guys. no, yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> mm-hmm. What's the all, what, what, what's the best game that they've ever made? Uh, anyone's ever made? Best video, video game. Oh, I, I can answer the be- that. The best video game ever made is Minecraft. Oh hell no! By far. Oh hell no! It has to be. Oh the, hell no! It has that, to be the that, game. that is up there, what bro. Because that? you can do anything. You can do anything. I was always always I was always a a, I was always a miner. I love saying. mining. One hundred percent. When I found mine, that diamond. Bro, you thought we won the Super Bowl. Mm, the diamond was crazy. <laughs> I'm saying Minecraft just because of the way that it changed everything and how early it was around. Bro, bef- before you could do anything in, in GTA you play or anything like that. Minecraft on the iPad before school. In Pocket school. Edition. Pocket Edition. That's what I'm saying. This is 
This is right, like. What, what's another one? What's another one? Bro, because there's one game out there that if, I, I, I'm curious to s- if you guys will guess it or say it. I'm gonna go with NBA 2K16 because Steph Curry was on the cover. It's just a game that sticks out to me, man. Bad, that was, that bad was, take, not, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. <laughs> we gotta put what do you want clip. me to say? Yeah. What do you want me to say? <laughs> fall guys? You want me to say fall guys? <laughs> what's no. What's Realistically, here like, a, here, here, this is like gonna be an old school time. game right here because we got an old school <laughs> dude. Two K sixteen was tough. No. I was cracked on my career. <laughs> NBA Jam. All right, that, was <laughs> that was tough. That was tough. Game breaker. When they go up all the way in the air, they get game heat. breaker. Boom shagalaga. That's how I play. Off the knee. Something that I think was like generationally like the game for everybody. Same thing. Not the fucking Minecraft, but GTA. Mm. It's classic. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. like a fucking yeah, five that or four. Any of them. Like that's a generational game. Los Santos. Can, bro. San Andreas. San I go four. Andreas. I go Vice four. City. But I like five. I like playing five more. GTA 5 was Yeah. All what, right, what so I'm going to name, that's I'm gonna name the top three. Okay. And you guys, I like this, can either not agree or you can agree. Right? That's fair. Only two options that's that true. I just said. <laughs> that's, so that's, true. Two options. that's true. That's <laughs> true. All right. Minecraft number one. He said it. I just don't. It's Fortnite nice. number two. In GTA number three. Yeah, I mean that's a that's I I, that, I like no, that. There's no game that's gonna ever be like Fortnite and the memories people have. I agree. I think also because COVID, Fortnite became like yeah. such a big thing. You know, like Fortnite I, was like people that were was and it was and it was free. I'm gonna bring my I'm gonna most, bring most my game right of here. all time. It was. Oh, here we go. Here we go. The first game to ever be like like real like online where you could play with people like that now it wasn't nope it wasn't set up the yeah, same that's a, way that's maybe four or five like that they might not like that but it was like uh it was world of warcraft and it was like a, a computer game you know what i'm saying <laughs> real presidential <laughs> no literally world and, and it was of like warcraft is, is that like the alien thing not alien but they're like they're like this. yeah a bunch of different <laughs> no 100 percent you, that was one of the characters, I'm sure. There was like, uh, I don't know. Like, there was, like a RuneScape? No, there was like Talk a tr- about RuneScape? No. no but I, on a TikTok. RuneScape, you could play with people. That was like an online thing. People were actually making hella money from RuneScape for a while. But hey. World of Warcraft, you could go on and like play with buddies around the world. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, and you couldn't use a mic to talk. But you, you could type in that. <laughs> hey, you'd be sitting there, and it was like uh, the same way that you see people dancing on Fortnite. Like you, like like you would see people dancing and stuff, doing the same shit with their character on these as you guys are running around doing missions together. Mm-hmm. And there was like certain missions you had to have like ten or fifteen people go in and, and and do a full mission together. So then it was like you're sitting online at three o'clock in the morning waiting on another. Six or seven people to <laughs> come up and start interacting with your group. Hundred percent. So, what's number two? You, you said you're gonna do top top five. Or? He did top three. Yeah. Top three. Were you guys a big zombie player? No. On my Call parents didn't let me play COD. I was sheltered as a child. Dude, I was I was a for, big, you know. buried origins, mob of the dead. Couldn't do any of that. I was playing Wii Sports, my boy. For real. I was I was my parents didn't let us play Call of Duty either until like middle school, I think. That mustache is not a joke. (laughs) We no, it's not a joke. That thing is bro. The mustache the mustache is like it's like a good promotional piece. You don't gotta get rid of it. You don't have to sell it. You just keep it around. People love it. I love it. People people come in. I'm fond of it. I enjoy it. Maybe we did. Maybe we came across it. Maybe not. I'm gonna kind of bring it back here. Why did you decide to leave Tennessee and come to Indiana? I know we talked about you coming to Indiana and whatnot, but what made you leave Tennessee? I just, I didn't really feel like you know it was the best, best spot for me. It was it wasn't the best fit. I loved everyone there. It just you know wasn't the best fit. And I, I you know, they obviously they have a an older guy in the quarterback room, and I just you know, I wanted to see the field. You know what I'm saying? And so I. I needed to get on the field. I needed to get those reps and you know, make mistakes. And ball. Yeah, I just needed the ball. Was there anything that you took away from being in that oh, quarterback every, room? Everything. Being with Hendon, being with Joe, they 
they've shown me everything that I need to know on, on how to be a, a, a quarterback, how to you know, manage the outside world, what to do um, off the field, and you know how to prepare, how to watch film, how to you know, be a leader, treat your teammates, and everything. And so everything that I learned how to be a, how to be a, a college quarterback, I've learned from Joe and Hendon. <laughs> That. That's sweet. That's a beautiful. I still thing. call Hendon. Man, he's, he's can't wait for his debut. Man, he's gonna be so good. Yeah. Lions. I was killing it too. Just beat just beat Spencer Rattler. It's my twin. Yeah, <laughs> I see it. My twin. I see it. Uh, how's Chase doing with the Warriors? He's doing good, man. It's it's weird because I don't talk to him. Only like if I talk to him, it'll be a, like playing the game. Like I, I never ask him how. Basketball is going because I know that's the last thing he wants to talk about. 100%. Yeah. I just talked to him about life, and he's homesick. Obviously, I feel like everyone would be. You know, he lives five hours away, and a five hours. Scott, no five flight. Five hour flight. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My bad. I'm broke. <laughs> oh, like dang. That's and, a and, and a little car. and a little sky and a little sky ride. Like, what presidential know, are you riding yeah, in? For real. It's got a nice little place. You guys know who E Man is? I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He lives with E-Man and Zaire, the dog. And, you know, Zaire's conquering the world right now. Literally. <laughs> He's just the greatest dog ever. And so, and, and then Hope. Hope's doing good. Good. Love Hope. He, man, he's doing good, man. He's living the life. He deserves it. He yeah. live, he's living the life. You know, I think he's going to come back for a game. So, be awesome. get him on the podcast. Yeah. That'd be dope. We love him. Yeah, it's man. the big break, man. Break his character a little bit, you know. Bro, if I'm on this podcast with him, he'll. Yeah, uh, I'll get I'll duo. get him going. You think? You think? I'll get I can get him going. Yeah, I bring the duo going. together. He'll be shy for the first ten minutes, and then I'll start just ripping questions. Oh my <laughs> God, bro. That could be a sick face off. We all we all come on in warrior jerseys. <laughs> that would be awesome. Warrior jerseys. <laughs> I'm wearing a Steph's. I'm wearing Steph. You got, Curry's you got to. Man. Yeah. You got to. Clay, Steph, Draymond. Draymond <laughs> Why you give me Clay? I put on an OG Molin. I put on the of course. Molin. <laughs> of course, you'll the hey, My boy Molin Fucking had the military. Vintage. Hey, put that on the video. <laughs> my boy had the military. The <laughs> meow, meow, meow. That's the, that ain't the Barber Kane, boy. That, hey, he was he was rocking that. That's though. the Carber Bane. Cut. <laughs> Dude, I love that's that. That's the guy, baited, man, that's the baited barber guy. shop. <laughs> but, what's wrong with him? The Barber Bane. The Barber that's Bane. Right. Uh, all right. We'll we'll wrap this up. My my final kind of question I got for you is just related to this season and what you're trying to what you're looking to do. Um, and, and obviously, you've been through five weeks, and you know what does the rest of the season look like? What are your kind of your goals just for this season in particular, and how are you kind of preparing for that? Yeah, we're two and two and three, right? Two and three, right? You know better than me. I think so. I, I don't pay attention. I just. I know. Slack this in. ball. Yes. <laughs> We're two and three. You know, our, obviously, our goal is to win out. You know, I feel like we have an opportunity to do that. I think we can shock the world. Um, our defense is playing great. Offense is, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna harp on offense because that's what that's what we play. But it needs to be better. Anybody on the team would say. Anybody on the offense would say that we need to be better. Um, we need to be more explosive, and I think we have the tools to do that. We got some guys injured, but they're they'll be back for the Michigan game. Cam Camper is a dog. He's a dog. I just, I just bro. had to had to throw that out there. He's, some catches he makes, man. Bro. Donovan McCauley. And you make you you throw DJ some Williams, good balls. Dog. <laughs> that brother. McCauley. Catch. CT J Lou. Dude, we got we have dogs, man. Hundred percent. Yeah. Coop. Like we we got dogs. We just. Yeah. yeah. That's just it's maybe. And it's you just, see moments where you guys do. Yeah, there are. That's what I'm saying. There second are half, Louisville, dude, dude, those receivers were, I mean, they were wide open. They they were just doing like they were just doing their thing. They're doing their thing, man. Doing their craft. Wide receivers were running the ball. O line was blocking great. Like that's and who you've we been are. Able to see that, yeah. That's who we are. It's all a process. If we're anything less than that, then you know we're gonna take we're gonna take it personal, and we're gonna you know go go and you know, we're gonna try to get better. Hundred percent. Do you guys, and, and obviously this is like, 
everything that's going on in college football right now with what Colorado and Dion's doing, do you do you draw any inspiration from seeing just the way that he speaks or like talks about kind of how he's preparing his team out there in Colorado and like I doing love, things with those guys? I love Dion. I love what he's doing for college football. Personally, I'm not a me- the media guy. I don't like yeah. that. That's just my you know my opinion. Like, I love Dion, man. I think he's doing an amazing job. He's bringing fans. He's bringing excitement to college football. I love it. 100%. But personally, I, I don't think I could, I, I could, you know. He knows what he's doing. Have all the cameras around, man. Like I just would want to. They're ball. shooting. They're shooting yeah. a documentary out yeah, there. Yeah, he's bro. built for that. There. I love that. <laughs> I love that. He's built for that. He he knows yeah, what he's yeah, doing. He's yeah. very experienced. Yeah. yeah. And he, he's and he's like a politician. He, he's oh, yeah. got it all written out. Yeah. He I would just be. Exactly on, I, I wouldn't be focused. Yeah. That's just the type of person I am. I just would not be focused. Good to stay low. Yeah. Just keep performing. I love just staying low. Hiding in the streets, hiding in the darks. You got in the alleys. He the alleys? runs around with his hood up. Where, I, where, I, where I live, bro, we got alleys. We got people walking yeah. around <laughs> 3, 3 a.m. over here like some tweakers. Bro. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure. It's Bloomington, baby. <laughs> I'm sure it just wasn't me. My bad about that last night when I was outside your room. <laughs> I was just excited about the season, bro. <laughs> yeah, I want an autograph. <laughs> so how do you feel? <laughs> I'm like, dude, what the heck is that? Look, look, look out the blind. <sighs> Standing there just. He's, hey, man. <laughs> uh, I mean, just just listening to you and, and hearing your story and everything. First of all, thank you for coming on. Uh, Thanks for having just, me, man. This was a blast. I, I love it. I, I feel I feel awesome. so excited about the future of not only you as a player, as a person, but you know, I feel like you're a type of guy that can really change a program. And Appreciate moving that. forward, I, I just can't wait to see the story. Last question, and we'll wrap it up. I don't know. I don't have the right to say that. No, you do. Say yes, oh. you absolutely do. Favorite IU athlete? Like personally? Current? Just Cur- current? Personally, the way he plays, not current. Just anybody. Current, throwback, anybody, man. I got mine. Well, we know who yours no, better no, be. No, you're, you're nah, not going to guess it. I really, dude, honestly, I don't want to be. I'm so ready to say take, this, bro. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I don't want to take Jack's answer, but I have to say TJD. Just because it means so okay. much more to me. It means so much more to me to see it. You know what I mean? And just to be able to be at the games and watch it, I have to say, Trace, just because I was there. You yeah. know what I mean? Like TJD, huh? 100%. I have to say that. Because Not Victor or Yogi. I just, wasn't, I just wasn't of that age to really, to really like feel what it's really about. You know what I mean? And for me, in my era of being at school and everything like that, it just has to be Trace because it's the big man. You know what I mean? Big like, man. That's just what big it has ticket. To be. I I mean, to rally off of that, I think like thirty years from now, twenty five years from now, I'm gonna be telling my kids or you know whoever it is, like that was the era. That was the era that I got to witness. Like you were saying, like TJD was was the guy that we saw. You know, we won a lot. He of, was he was our guy. Of big games too. You know what? Like he just he brought the program back and he just. It was so much fun to watch him. Um, so I'll just I'll say Trace Jackson Davis, Taven Jackson. Oh, you sweetheart. I'm glazing, bro. Been here, been here for six, <laughs> seven hey, months. Big glazer. Literally. Big glazer. He said, I've been watching you for a long time, boy. <laughs> My man, boy. I remember those. The way you look out there on that field. <laughs> I remember those middle school highlights I watched. Oh, man. The uh, I would say... I grew by the same thing I told told you guys last time. I grew up in that that uh, that old depot phase. You know yeah, what I'm saying? When I was going through high school, I was 20, 30 minutes away from here, and it was all you heard about well, was just his explosiveness, how athletic he was, and that was when IU basketball started to revamp back into some type of phenomena. You know what I'm saying? People always loved IU basketball. But it wasn't until you got him back in the game that people really understood, like, yo, we're a this, is, this is still IU basketball, guys. Yep. Like, we're not we're not something to play with. And I think that for myself, like, just what I know the most about basketball and what I've seen as far as success goes 
going all to the league. Hey, he turned down 117 mil to come back to the Pacers. Just I, it sucks he got injured to go to the Heat, but that's mil? hey to for a couple years. Dude, he was a dog before he got like he was, he was coming. Tough. He was on the rise. Yeah, yeah. Like, he was a true guard, and yeah. his craft was getting. Is it was getting, getting great. So, so to see Victor. see somebody in a jersey and, and play the same way you guys feel about Trace. Hey yo, that was that was Oladipo for me. Oladipo. What about you? All right, so it's TJD, right? Mm. But man, someone's real close. Not no, no, not real close. But I got two. Mm-hmm. TJD and Trey Galloway. Yeah, I Galloway's lo- a dog. I love him. Yeah. Demon, I call him Demon because that's pretty much what he is. Yeah, what about Trey Galloway? It's just man, I I love his energy. Yeah, I just love his energy, like. Clap it up. <laughs> yes. I love Trey Galloway, man. I just, <laughs> nice guy, plays hard, and just, you know, is a fierce competitor. And I loved when he, like, dunked in and just, like, was going crazy and screaming. And it's almost like an inside joke because I know who he is off the court. Yeah. And so, like, when, when uh, he's it's, on it's there, like, oh, look, look at that white boy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when a white boy he's is that doing, white boy. It, when he's doing good, it's, it's almost like it's, it's lit to, like, he no, brings it. He I know brings what you're it. Like, saying. damn, that boy got some. You know, he's got and he some, earns it. Yeah. He has earned, I and that's what I was, we were talking about earlier. Like, I was talking to somebody about it. It's like, he has earned every single minute he plays and will play. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's no, there's, you know, nobody is playing Trey, you know, to be frank, nobody's playing Trey Galloway because, well, we might be able to develop. No, he came on the court. As soon as he started playing, he was a difference maker. Yeah, yeah. and he he's not—he's not, he's not he dunking on motherfuckers' faces. I remember freshman year, he—he's just hustling hard, putting the ball where it has to be, and just playing with heart. Yeah, and that's what he's done consistently, and he continues to get better. And man, I can't wait to see him start. Yeah, that's what I want to see because he is a difference Cross your fingers. maker. Yes, he's gonna start. He's gonna start. Difference maker. He's the—he's he's the, he's, he's the lead. He's I don't want to. You captain. can't take him off the court. Yeah. He's I someone wanna, you cannot I don't take off say, the court. I don't want to project anything because I don't have the knowledge. I don't want to, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I feel that. But it's gonna be, dude, the maker. whole basketball team is good, man. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm curious. I like Ja'Kai, man. Yeah. Great person. Never yeah. seen him play basketball, but great person. He was in here He was in here right before you got here. Yeah. We cut him up right before we, right I've before seen, we got I've the I've seen Cubs going. play. Tough. Dude, I think he's just going to be another uh, Trey Galloway. Just yeah. tough. I, yeah, that's exactly what he was saying. Rock down yeah. shooter. Um, you know what you're gonna get out of Malik. Yeah. I'm curious to see uh, KW. Or, yeah, yeah, KW. KW. Khalil. X is X. <laughs> like, tough. Love him. Nothing like him. He gonna be back, baby. Dog. Hundred percent. Dog. Um, Dog. CJ Gunn is on the rise. Hell yeah. Dog. Indianapolis. I played with C- I played with CJ. Dog. <laughs> Dog. Um, man, who else? Oh. Uh, Anthony, yeah, tough kid, hundred percent. Just tough nosed kid plays. He plays hard defense. Hundred percent. You got Dog. to. We, um, we got a lot of great players. Who else is there? Mac, oh, McKenzie. McKenzie. McKen- oh, I forgot about McKenzie. Dog. Fuck. <laughs> he's young, dude. I'm older than him. That's crazy. That's he, wild. Yeah, he, he's about to tear. Yeah, man, he looks up. old. He's a big boy. He just looks like a grown man. Season. No, he really does. He's ready. His to go. beard's growing in. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> His beard's growing in. All righty. All right. Let's wrap her up. Thank you hey. again for coming on, man. means Thank the you. world. For Thank real. You. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Good, y'all, good. Y'all are great people, man. Thank you, brother. The love is, is there. I we wish you it. the best, man. Thank we you. We really do. I appreciate it. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's a wrap, baby. Episode four, baby. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Bro. Thank you. Get a man. Get a man. That's so fire.